Hello everybody. Today it is my first lecture of the module 4. From today I am starting the module 4 and in module 4 I will discuss about the axial vibration of bar. Previously we have studied the transverse vibration of string in continuous system. Now we will start the axial vibration of bar. Uh, this axial vibration is very common in many situation. However, it may take place in combined way with uh, this bending vibration and also with torsional vibration. But here we will consider independently the axial vibration of the bar. So outlines of the lecture for today will be first I will derive the equations of motion for axial vibration of bar using Newton's second law and energy principle that is by Hamilton's equation. Then I will carry out the model analysis for the axial vibration of bar. The purpose of model analysis is to find out the natural frequencies and mode shapes which are the primary requirements for analytical solution of the continuous system using the model superimposition technique. Then with the help of natural frequencies and modes we will be able to decouple the equations of motion of the axial vibration of bar that is actually a second order partial differential equation and with the help of this uh, superimposition of modes and orthogonality condition that was discussed earlier again we will be able to decouple the equations of motion and uh, it will be converted into a discretized equation in generalized coordinates time dependent coordinates so once you decouple the equation of motion then the solution of the time dependent generalized coordinate is similar to the solution of single degree freedom system subjected to free vibration and force vibration for different excitation. Then once you know the time dependent coordinates then using the mode summation method we can get the actual response of the bar at any location at any instant of time. So then I will uh, consider a free vibration case for a given initial conditions. Now let us see the equation of motion of the axial vibration of bar. Here the bar is uh, shown here. It may have a uniform cross section or maybe a varying cross section. So in general the cross section is a function of x. Density of the material will take rho that is the mass density and modulus of elasticity of the material is taken E, Young's modulus. At Fxt is the external force that is acting on the bar in the posing the longitudinal displacement of the bar. Now you see the bar is shown here of length L and we consider this is the reference section from where the, the distance x is measured. At a distance x we take a small elementary portion of the bar that is very infinitesimal length of dx and we have on this element the forces acting are fxt dx this is the resisting force fxt and on the other side it will be fxt plus the increment of f in addition there are distributed force in axial direction fxt so total force on this element will be fxt dx okay now if i consider the newton second law from the free body diagram of this element then I can write 
the summation of forces in the longitudinal direction fxt plus dfx by dx into dx that you are seeing here then in the opposite direction it is minus fxt plus the externally applied force fxt dx this should be balanced by the inertia force as per Newton's second law. So if rho is the density of the material and A is the cross-sectional area, then mass per unit length is rho into A. So rho A into acceleration del square U by del T square and uh, on this element it will be into dx. Then we can cancel some common term because this will be cancelled and uh, then divided it by dx will get a relation that relation will be your del f by del x plus f x t equal to rho a del square u by del t square now you see that axial displacement u that is shown here will have some increment say del u so the strain that we find out from this is del u by del x that is the strain in the longitudinal direction normal strain so the strain into modulus of elasticity will give you stress so stress will be e del u by del x this is the stress and force f is nothing but sigma into a so therefore we have got the force fxt as ae del u by del x okay after knowing this f in terms of u let us now substitute in this equation and we get here instead of f we are now substituting ae del u by del x and this is the externally applied force equal to rho a del square u by del t square so we have assumed that rho a equal to mass density so we now write this rho a is equal to m the unit of m is uh, mass per unit length so if mass is measured in kg then we this quantity is denoted as mass per unit length and its unit will be kg per meter in SI unit. Now if I substitute this then I get this equation however in many cases cross section is uniform so if cross section is uniform AE can be taken out and therefore we have got the differential equation for the axial vibration of the bar is same as this. Now here I consider the force vibration. However, I did not consider here the damping. But with the introduction of damping, there will be slight change in the equation of motion. So if I consider the damping, then in the free body diagram that I show for the elemental length dx, here it is f and there it is f plus del f by del x into dx and then externally applied force was f x t damping force is opposite to the motion if our positive direction of the motion is this so in that case damping will be in the opposite direction so damping force you know that it is the coefficient of damping into this velocity so c del u by del t is the damping force and on this element you can multiply it into dx so that you get the total damping force now introducing the damping force the equation is modified as ae del square u by del x square plus fxt equal to m del square u by del t square plus c del u by del t so this is the equation of motion when one considers the damping of the system but in many cases we 
neglect damping so in that case the equation is same as this and even if the f is neglected then we get the equation if externally applied force is zero and damping is also zero then the equation is simply this equal to m del square u del t square this equation has the same nature as the transverse vibration of string so solution technique will be almost similar except the parameter that are here for axial vibration is different now let us solve it by hamilton principle why we use the hamilton principle because hamilton principle is also a general principle for deriving the equation of motion as well as boundary conditions in the structural dynamics problem so hamilton's method is based on the energy principle where total energy is integrated with respect to time and set to zero it is an integral formulation by which we get differential equation as well as boundary condition simultaneously so that is the beauty of the hamilton principle you will get two things that boundary condition as well as this uh, equations of motion okay now hamilton principle including the non conservative forces so w is the work done due to non conservative forces non conservative force what are the non conservative force in dynamic system we get encounter damping as well as the externally applied force so this w will include the work done by damping as well as externally applied force here t is the kinetic energy and kinetic energy you know that it depends on the velocity so if m is the mass and del u by del t is the velocity so mass into velocity square into half for the small element and for the entire bar you have to integrate with respect to x from limit 0 to l so here we get the kinetic energy of the bar t is equal to half 0 to l m del u by del t whole square into dx this is nothing but velocity velocity squared okay strain energy of the bar due to axial deformation so due to axial deformation since the bar is constrained to one end or it may be constrained in both the ends so in that case the strain will be produced as a result the energy will be stored due to the straining of the bar so this energy is known as strain energy due to axial deformation and it is given by u equal to half 0 to l a e del u by del x whole square dx so this is the expression for strain energy of the bar in axial deformation now we come to the component w now w here will be divided into two parts one is w1 and another is w2 w1 is the work done due to work done due to external force external force and this w2 will be work done due to damping force okay so if fxt is externally applied force and u is the displacement then the work done is fxt u xt dx 0 to l integration 0 to l here we have not used a factor half because the load does not change during deformation so there is no need to consider a factor half the average value of the work done so here fxt u xt dx is the work done due to externally applied force there is one part next part is work done by the damping force now damping is 
opposite to the direction of the displacement. So therefore, the work done will be negative. So if C is the damping coefficient, C is the damping coefficient or damping constant per unit length, per unit length, then minus C del U by del T is the damping force per unit length into this displacement U. So this will give the work done on the element dx. So integrating 0 to L will get the component W2. Now apply the Hamilton principle. Here due to interaction of damping and externally applied force, this component W is coming. However, if we write this T minus U, that is our Lagrangian, L is the Lagrangian. Lagrangian, then also it can be written as del L plus W dt, okay. G integration T1 to T2. At two time instant T1 to T2, okay. Now let us carry out the variation of this quantity. First, let us take the variation of strain energy. So del U, when I take the variation, that is the differentiation, it is actually nothing but the differentiation, differential coefficient. So if I take this differential coefficient, then half and two will go out. So AE del U by del X into del by del X into del U, okay. So that is an integration 0 to L. This integration has to be there. So we have got this term, all right. Actually it comes like that del, del u by del x, okay. But the changing of operator, interchange of operator is permissible. Therefore we write del del x del u. So therefore, we have simplified this in this way. Now this expression can be integrated by parts. So taking this as a first function, this is as a second function. Integration by parts rule says that the first function that del u by del x, of course the coefficient a is associated into integration of the second function, so del u and we have put the limit minus differentiation of the first function. So differentiation of the first function will give you del square u by del x square and coefficient a is there already. And integration of the second function that is del u and whole thing is now integrated 0 to L. Okay. So now we get the variation of the strain energy expression as like that. Now variation of kinetic energy now can be calculated. So again kinetic energy is half m del u by del t whole square dx. So if I take the variation of del t then m del u by del t then your this variation of del u by del t will be there and then integration 0 to L. And again the change of this operator is permitted. So therefore we write del T is equal to integration 0 to L m del u by del T into del by del T into delta u that is the variation of u. This variation of the work done due to non-conservative forces delta w is nothing but delta w1 plus w2. So w1 you know minus c del u by del t and uh, u was there so we take uh, the variation so delta u plus fxt del u variation of u is taken directly and this is integrated whole with uh, respect to dx in the limit 0 to l. Okay. So all the variation quantity we have obtained. Now 
write this in the Hamilton equation T minus U is nothing but Lagrangian ok sometimes it can be written in terms of L so L means T minus U T is the kinetic energy U is the strain energy stored in the bar so first we have written this U so it is minus T1 to T2 AE del U by del X into delta U limit 0 to L minus we have got earlier 0 to L AE del square U by del X square del U into DX and it is integrated with respect to time T. Two integration are involved one is with respect to L another is with respect to time. One is with respect to X that is in the limit 0 to L the domain of the bar and another is two instance T1 and T2 that are taken as the limit for integration and therefore we write this first term delta T integration T1 T2 ok. This is nothing but this whole quantity is nothing but delta T dt T1 T2 ok. Then del U del U. So this is the integration of del U with respect to time T. Then we come to the kinetic energy term. So kinetic energy term we have already got it m del u del t del by del t into del u dx dt and t1 t2 0 to l that is two integrations are involved that is what is your this expression is meaning is this ok. Then comes the work done due to non-conservative forces. So minus C del U by del T delta U plus Fxt delta U dx dt integration T1 to T2 for time and 0 to L for space. Okay. Now first part will not touch is completed. Second part now we have to integrate. So integrating by parts if I see this quantity see this expression and then integrate by part what we take this specially if I integrate by parts then I take this as the first function m del u by del t and this is the second function so del u limit t1 and t2 minus integration t1 and t2 differentiation of the first function m del square u by del t square integration of the second function del u dt of course the space integral I have not written uh, everything has to be again integrated with respect to L. So this integration I have uh, written in the next page and uh, it is here this integration how I carried out I explained it with the help of the rule of integration by parts. Then this is the integral of the variation of the non-conservative work done due to non-conservative forces ok. So all the quantities now we have written now let us collect the terms the terms that we collect is del u term the coefficient of del u are all this is written here a e del square u by del x square minus m del square u by del t square minus c del u by del t plus f x t and this is del u is there dx dt because double integration is there one with respect to space 0 to l and another with respect to time t1 and t2 and this is equal to 0 because the Hamilton equation says that delta t minus u plus w dt equal to 0. So ultimately we get this term as 0 and other things where the boundary conditions are involved that you can see in the previous slides here here in the previous slide that quantity is nothing but boundary condition. So if I see this quantity either this is 0 or u is 0. So that means AE del u by del x 0 means stress is 0 
and u is 0 is displacement is 0. So, the condition at the ends may be if stress is 0 that means it is a free condition and if it is displacement is 0 then it is a fixed condition. So, these are the condition that may be possible in this bar in one dimensional element. Now, since del u is not 0, del u is not 0 and it is arbitrary. So, governing differential equation for damped axial vibration now can be written equating this term to be 0. So, we get now the governing differential equation of motion for the axial vibration of bar. Here I have written the externally applied force and also damping. So, it is actually the general equation. So, this is the force vibration, force damped vibration, damped vibration of bar in axial direction. Let us first do the model analysis. So, model analysis the same name is the free vibration analysis. Now, here we will carry out the model analysis or free vibration analysis considering damping to be 0. So, in that case the equation reduces to A e del square u by del x square equal to m del square u by del t square. Now, let us assume that the axial displacement u x t is a product of a space function u x and the harmonic function sin omega t because you know that free vibration has to take place as a harmonic vibration. So, naturally the frequency of vibration omega is the natural frequency that we have to find out. So, this free vibration of bar any thing bar plate or beam or anything phi vibration is always harmonic. So, in case of absence of damping there is no phase difference. So, we can directly write that u x t is equal to capital U x into sin omega t. If I substitute here we will get d square u by d x square. So, that means when I differentiate this sin omega t will be taken as a constant because it is differentiation with respect to x. So, therefore, d square u by dx square is coming. Then in the right hand side when I differentiate you can see this, this differentiation will be 2 times differentiation. So, it will be minus omega square again sin omega t will come. Okay. So, therefore, the m will be there. So, minus m omega square and space function u will be remaining. So, therefore, we get the equation in this form ordinary differential equation. Now, let m omega square by a is equal to beta square. So, therefore, this equation may be written as simply del square u by del x square plus beta square u equal to 0. So, that is the equation. This equation is a homogeneous second order differential equation and if I assume that u is equal to e to the power lambda x then after substituting this we get lambda square beta square equal to 0. So, therefore, lambda has roots plus minus i beta. Okay. So, the solution can be written as e is equal to c 1 e to the power i beta x plus c 2 e to the power minus i beta x. After converting this to sin and cosine cos beta x i sin beta x and c 2 as cos beta x minus i sin beta x the second term and then combining the coefficients we can simply write the solution in this form. So, solution is now written simply as u x is equal to a sin beta x plus b cos beta x. So, our bar was fixed at one end 
that is x is equal to 0 fixed and it is free at this end. So, it is excited by a force P or anything and length of the bar is L, A is the cross sectional area, E is the modulus of elasticity. Now, at x is equal to 0, U is 0 because it is fixed end. So, therefore, we get B is equal to 0. Substituting this, we get B is equal to 0. Now, at x is equal to L, which is free end, the st stress is 0. So, stress is del u del x into A e equal to 0. And after substituting the mode function, we get and some time function which will be cancelled equal to 0. So, ultimately this will also be cancelled. So, we will get only this equation. Now, this gives if you substitute this condition, then you will get a equation which is first we got a is equal to 0. Now, you will get a sin beta L equal to 0. So, this condition will be obtained. Now, if you differentiate this quantity, what you get? You get u dash, this is the differentiation sign minus a beta cos beta x plus b beta sin beta x. Okay. So, at x is equal to L, previously we get b is 0. So, at x is equal to L, we get this quantity to be 0 that means a beta cos beta l to be 0. Sine function will not be 0 because mode shape will now be obtained with this function. So, in that case you see beta is 0 already we have taken. So, therefore, this a is a constant if it is 0 the solution will be trivial and beta cannot be 0. So, therefore, cos beta L 0. So, cos beta L equal to 0. This gives the solution beta n equal to 2 n minus 1 into pi divided by 2 L n is equal to 1 to up to infinity. Okay. So, infinite number of modes are taken. However, it is not necessary to take infinite number of modes in actual calculations. You can truncate the number of modes to a finite size. Okay. So, once you obtain the beta n, you can get the natural frequency because natural frequency is related to uh, beta because we have got beta square, if you remember this beta square m omega square a e, we have assumed. Now, once you get this beta, then we can get omega n as beta n root over a e by m and substituting beta n as this here. Here we get now 2 n minus 1 divided by 2 into pi root over a e by m l square. This l has gone inside the square root with a square term. Again n is 1 to etc. So, mode shape function is now given by u n x a n sin 2 n minus 1 divided by 2 l into x. Now, for first mode, say for example, n is equal to 1, we will give you the fundamental mode. Fundamental natural frequency and also we get the fundamental mode shape. So, see if n is equal to 1, then omega 1 is equal to that is if you substitute here it is 1. So, 2 minus 1 is 1. So, pi by 2 a e by m l square and mode shape first mode shape u 1 will be a 1 sin pi x by 2 l. So, this function shows 
this is uh, for n is equal to 1 for n is equal to any other index integral value of n you can obtain the natural frequency and mode shape corresponding mode shape now here one thing you can note that a1 that is the amplitude of the displacement is still arbitrary and cannot be found out okay so therefore mode shapes cannot give you the absolute magnitude but it will give you the definite shape so this magnitude has to be normalized or mode shape has to be normalized by different ways we have adopted in our earlier discussion also the mass normalization here also we will adopt the normalization with respect to mass ok now say a1 is 1 for example a1 is 1 then you can see the nature of the mode shape say at x is equal to 0 which is fixed n so obviously displacement is 0 at x is equal to 0 displacement is 0 this is x is equal to l this is 0 ok so at x is equal is the free n so therefore displacement if I see here x is equal to l you will get sin pi by 2 is 1 so that is non-zero displacement because it is fixed n so therefore we will get a curve like that ok therefore mode shape can be plotted and I have plotted the different mode shapes say first mode shape if I normalize with respect to mass again we will get the coefficient a n equal to root over 2 by ml and if I use the orthogonality condition m u j x m u i x dx is equal to Kronecker delta i j k i Kronecker delta j k is the a special uh, symbol which means that it is 1 if j is equal to k and 0 if j is equal to not k so with this orthogonality condition we can decouple the equation of motion that will be discussed later on and you can see this is the first mode first mode this is second mode and this is third mode so and subsequent modes can also be drawn now since we have got this mode shapes of axial vibration of bar which is fixed at one end and free at other end now let us proceed to find the mode shape of a free free bar now both the ends of a bar are free there are many examples say space vehicle which can be treated as a axial element which is vibrating in axial direction and it has no constraint at the ends however there will be vibration in the axial direction so such conditions are this free end condition examples are say rocket missiles etc or other things also so in that case you get the free end condition is the stress is zero at both the ends that means du by dx is zero at x is equal to zero and x is equal to l now du by dx is nothing but a beta cos beta x minus b beta sin beta x ok application of boundary condition gives sin beta l equal to 0 which gives beta l is equal to n pi and therefore beta is equal to n pi by l now this equation is satisfied by n is equal to 0 1 2 etc but 0 value actually gives you the natural frequency which does not conform to a elastic body so such type of natural frequency is seen when a object or body performs a rigid body motion so it has zero natural frequency which conforms to a semi-definite system such type of system is called semi-definite where there is no constraints at the ends and the body is free to move and body is moved as a whole so in that case the motion is rigid body motion and therefore we get the natural frequency 0 so in that case if u0 is the rigid body modes then we can write this equation so that gives you the solution and substituting the boundary conditions you again got u0 is equal to a0 so u0 is a constant that means it is a rigid body displacement so here we get this 
So hence zero natural frequency case corresponds to mode that is interpreted as a displacement of the bar as a whole. This is known as rigid body mode and is typical of unrestrained system. This is called rigid body motion and it is characteristic of unrestrained system that is also known as semi-definite system. We now get the elastic modes that is not zero excluding zero, one, two, three, etc. We get u n x equal to b n cos n pi x by l. In free vibration case, since there is no external force, we can write f t equal to m x into del square u by del t square d x integration 0 to l. This is actually the inertia force and since there is no external force, so it is equated to 0. This shows that a rigid body mode is orthogonal to other elastic mode. The orthogonality condition for the mode is again written as like that mx ujx ukx dx 0 to l is 0 if j is equal to not k and when j is equal to 1 and if the mode shapes are normalized with respect to mass then its value is taken as 1. So normalized mode shape for free free beam bar is unx equal to root over 2 by ml cos n pi x by l n is equal to 1 2 etc. So here you can see the three modes that I plotted for free free beam. So in that case you can see that this omega naught corresponds to zero natural frequency and therefore you are getting a rigid body modes. Then you are getting the first mode elastic mode when n is equal to 1 and both the ends are free so you are getting the displacement here. Similarly n is equal to 2 you are getting the mode shape like that and you are getting the nodal points also that are appearing and increasing as the number of modes increases. Okay. Force vibration. Now decoupling is done including the forcing function as well as damping. So take this uxt equal to summation of i is equal to 1 to n uix i t substituting this in the equation of motion and now we get summation a e d square u i x by d x square into eta i t plus f x t equal to i is equal to 1 to n m u i x eta i double dot plus i is equal to 1 n this is the summation c u i x eta i dot t this is the uh, time differentiation of the generalized coordinate first time differentiation because velocity is there. So multiplying both sides by ujx, we multiply this equation by ujx. Earlier equation that we get here, we take here and multiply by another mode ujx. So all the terms are multiplied, but first term is under the summation term, summation uh, sign. And here right hand side also two terms are under summation uh, sign. Now integrate both sides with respect to dx from 0 to l then if I integrate this quantity we can write this a e d square u j x dx square u j x eta i t dx plus f x t u j x dx and this is also integration equal to 0 to l summation i is equal to 1 to n m u i x u j x eta i double dot dx c u i x u j x eta dot i t this is the time function so i have written index t into dx. Now integration is done using some relations that relations are a e d square u by dx square is equal to minus m omega i square u i x. Another assumption is done that damping is proportional to the mass if damping is proportional to the mass then it is taken as c is equal to 2 xi i this is the damping ratio in the ith mode m into omega i. So this assumption is done and another equation is the orthogonality equation. So mx ujx ukx dx and its integration 0 to l equal to 0.
So after using these relations and also orthogonality condition, we now decouple the equation of motion. So equation of motion are now decoupled into simple form eta i double dot t plus 2 j i i omega i eta dot i t plus omega i square eta i t equal to q i t i is equal to 1 to etc. Where q j t equal to 0 to l f x t u j x d x. So this is the generalized force. Okay. Now let us illustrate this example with the help of a free vibration case. Free axial vibration of bar fixed at x is equal to 0 and free at x is equal to l. Suppose initial conditions are given u x at t is equal to 0 as some function of x and initial velocity is taken at t is equal to 0 equal to 0. Using model superposition technique we write the displacement of the bar u x t. So u i x is the ith mode eta i t is the corresponding generalized time dependent coordinate and it is summed up over n number of modes. Now substituting this eta i t which is the free vibration case we earlier got this and omega i is there plus omega i square eta i equal to 0. And solution of this equation we already know if damping is there. So e to the power minus j omega i t into this condition a i sin omega i t plus b i cos omega i t. That quantity will be omega d. Okay. And meaning of omega d is damp natural frequency at ith mode is nothing but omega i root over 1 minus j square. So after getting this, this is the damped natural frequency and meaning of damped natural frequency is this. Okay. So after time differentiation we get the velocity u dot x t is equal to summation i equal to n root over 2 by ml sin 2 i minus 1. What is this? This was the mode shape. This was the mode shape function phi i x normalized with respect to mass. Okay. Similarly, here also it is the mode shape function we can identify. And uh, the time differentiation is carried out for this term within the third bracket and we get it minus j i i omega i e to the power minus j i i omega i t into a i sin omega d i t plus b i cos omega d i t. So everywhere you substitute this damped natural frequency. So that is written here after time differentiation and then we put this t is equal to 0 to get the initial condition. So t is equal to 0 we get this term for displacement function and for velocity function we get this term because the velocity is taken 0 so we get ultimately this term. Now multiply both sides of this equation, this equation as well as this equation by m u k x. This is taken in order to utilize the orthogonality condition as we have derived so that we can get rid of the summation term and integrate using the orthogonality condition. So first term if I multiply this and then integrate from 0 to L, we will get here in this term only b k or b i and here we will get this m f x and this multiplied by u k x d x. So knowing this f x and after carrying out the integration and putting the limit we can obtain the b k. Once the b k is obtained then the velocity expression that we have already obtained. Again here we multiply both sides by this m u k x and integrate using the orthogonality condition of the modes. So making use of the orthogonality condition or by virtue of the orthogonality condition you will get 
only one term that is existing and other terms that is i is equal to not j will be uh, 0 but i is equal to j will be only existing and that will be 1. So therefore you will get this term j i i omega i beta k omega i a k equal to 0. Now since we have obtained the b i earlier so substituting b i here b i or b k whatever you call we now get a k. So once the constants of integration a k and b k are found out then we can write the free vibration solution u x t as summation i is equal to 1 to n root over 2 by m l m is the mass per unit length l is the length of the bar sin 2 i minus 1 divided by 2 pi x bracket e to the power minus j omega i t e i sin damped natural frequency d i t b i cos damped natural frequency at the ith mode into t. So that is the free vibration term and we got already a i and b i. a i and b i are already obtained from this procedure and therefore we know the complete solution where you remember that damped natural frequency in the ith mode is undamped natural frequency multiplied by 1 minus j square. So let us uh, summarize today's lecture. In this lecture we have discussed axial vibration of the bar. First the governing differential equations are obtained by Newton's second law and by Hamilton's principle. Natural frequency and mode shapes of the bar have been discussed with reference to fixed free as well as free free bar. Decoupling technique using model superimposition principle was discussed considering mass proportional damping. Free vibration response of damped model has been obtained with given initial conditions. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.